Yo, what's going on guys? It is Foxy 98 here. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the F1 project for you guys today here on the channel. As you can see, we're starting things off in the showroom uh, for a different reason. Um, but first things first, um, I haven't actually, but when this video actually goes out, I haven't actually released the first episode of the F1 project yet. So I don't know if you guys liked it. And I don't know if you hate it, but I'm carrying it on because I really, uh, I'm already very much enjoying what I'm doing. Um, and obviously, uh, I'm recording these all in advance because I'm recording a bunch of videos in preparation for my eventual return to YouTube because I haven't actually returned yet. I haven't uploaded the video, but um, I'm in the showroom for a specific reason now. With the F1 project, I'm obviously doing this on the PC version of F1 2019. So I thought I would go ahead. I haven't done anything crazy because I don't really have the time to go crazy. But as you can see, I've just made a slight little tweak to my Mercedes just to make it a little bit you know, sort of my own Mercedes. So, I've done very much, not a lot actually with the car. Uh, first things first, you can see on the top, you can see where the blue um, sort of, you know, swipes across there underneath the Patronus logo. I've decided to go ahead and do that, but I've gone ahead and done it on the top of the fin, you can see there. So, I've gone ahead and put the little bit of white and blue uh, up there just to add uh, a little bit at that top end. I just felt it was a little bit bland. Um, so, I thought I've done that up there. And I always like, uh, I do like, I love the black on the Mercedes. I, I do really enjoy, I do really enjoy the colour scheme. So, I decided to go ahead and fully uh, colour in the, it's a bit, it's a bit dodgy because the wireframe is not the best. But um, I put a little gradient tool in there uh, on the front nose. And then the front wing itself is fully in black. Now, I know that the Patronus, uh, Cynthium and the Pirelli signs are a little bit hard to see because they're in a slightly greyish black colour. But I actually think it looks kind of cool that way. I'm not going to change them to white, uh, which was the intentional plan. Obviously, you can still see the Dank and Nikki uh, sign in there. And obviously, the red star remains. All the stars remain. I've literally just added uh, that little piece onto the fin and just changed my front wing about. Just to, you know, make it look, look a little bit different. But no, no matter what, we have things to do. And we are here for the Chinese Grand Prix. By the way, here's the Drivers' Championship. I don't think I actually showed it at all in Episode 1, which is a bit embarrassing. But we're, me and Hamilton are both tied on 44 points. We've both managed to secure... A pole position. Sorry, yeah, I think we've got, got a pole position. I'm, I'm not really that sure, actually. But, um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to be um, cracking on with it. But, uh, obviously, myself and Lewis Hamilton have both managed to secure ourselves a race win and also get a fastest lap bonus point as well in the process. Um, later down the line, I am going to be looking at trying to get a brand new helmet. Um, but I have no idea how to mod the helmet into career mode side of things. I've looked at tutorials and I've tried it myself and it doesn't work. So if anyone knows how to, help. Because <laughs> I've got helmets. I've got my own helmet. I just don't know what the hell to do with it. But um, yeah, first things first though, uh, upgrade wise. Oh, you'll never guess what guys. You will, you will not believe it. Yeah, it didn't work. Um, we uh, obviously purchased this upgrade for the front wing gurney flap. Uh, and it failed. Um, so that's fantastic. We do have enough resource points to go ahead and replace that piece as Emma needs to shut up. We've also then got uh, this aerodynamic, uh, sorry, the chassis upgrade hopefully coming for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. But the aim for the episode is we're going to get this engine upgrade uh, going. We're going to get this front wing gurney flap upgrade sorted. And then hopefully, maybe if we have enough resource points, it's a bit of a stretch. We can then start working on an extra efficiency point uh, in there as well. In fact, maybe I could try and get one of these in and then it'll make this. 400 resource points so you know well we're having a little look uh, we are also going to select as emma was talking about a rival for this see you know, fine bull sack boy i'm not really that bothered uh but i'm gonna go into qualifying wow that was my worst qualifying i think of the year p5 wow that's i think that was the same as australia i want to say didn't feel comfortable though i don't feel at all comfortable, in fact, actually, around this track in general. Wow, Butler actually did very bad. I thought he would have been ahead of me, but uh, Lewis Hamilton, though, claims pole position. I mean, if you look at the grid, Hamilton's claimed pole position by virtually half a second over Weber, and then it's Vettel, and then Verstappen, and then myself, and then Devon in there as well. That's a... I mean, kudos to Lewis for grabbing pole, but, I mean, when I was doing the practice programs as well, was not I wasn't settled, uh, really, so... That's a bit of a shame, but we're going to go straight to the grid now and see how we can get on. And starting alongside is Lucas Faber. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Vettel, Do I need you to... Thomas, is he going to do this the whole way? Magnuson, Perez, Sainz, Fair enough. Lando Norris, Let him carry on. Fiat, Nico Hulkenberg, and Gasly, Raikkonen, Ricardo, Lance Stroll, 
and Antonio Giovinazzi, Good. And Robert Kavica, just going to carry on. This guy's annoying me. Just moments away. It's time to go down to the track. Thank you for that. Right, um, we're on the grid then to start the Chinese Grand Prix. We're going to be pitting on lap four, going to the mediums and on to the end of the race. Of course, we do 25% races in this. I'm not doing 50%. Uh, and now, here we go then. Right, bad qualifying, but we can make it up in the race. We're normally quicker in a race because the AIs are slower, but here we go. Good start. Very good start. To keep my nose tucked in there, break a little bit earlier. I'm gonna be very aggressive here versus Faber. It didn't quite work out. Oh, he's, I've got Verstappen alongside a minute. Can shut him off. Good start though. Up into third straight away. Nice. Good stuff. That's a strong start. Well now I've got to clear Lucas. End of the first lap, gap to myself and Weber, nine tenths of a second. Hamilton and Weber are already flying in this race, so it's going to be very hard to keep up with them. Worst case scenario, I'd like to finish in P2, to be honest. So far in this Grand Prix, I have absolutely no pace. Not happy with the car. Not happy with the... Just, yeah, just not really that happy, to be honest. I'm surprised I managed to qualify in P5, to be honest. I've got Sebastian Vettel now at my backside. Weber and Hamilton, as you can see up in the distance, have just hasta la vista me. I'm hoping the mediums will feel nicer, but so far, not so good. Vettel's in prime position here to attack. I'm going to go straight to the inside line to cover it off. He opens up the DRS. He's going to go to the outside line. I should be able to cover this one off. Maybe not, actually. I'm going to just run him out of road race, basically. I thought Lewis went into the pits then. I thought I was going a bit blind. Not blind, just crazy. 2.2, the gap to myself and Weber. That's actually come down a little bit on that lap. Why has the game set me for hard tyres? Right, if Hamilton comes in, obviously I can't stop. The Stappen's going at Vettel, which is going to keep me at peace for a bit. No, I've gone deep. Let's see what Lewis does. Lewis stays out. So I'm coming in. Is anyone going to opt for mediums, or are they all opting for hards? Interesting. I'm not. I'm going for mediums. Tyres, well, they well, they lasted. Just. Um, but no one's going to come in. I'm not going to get held up in the pits as well, which is great. There we go. There we are. Right. That is now us done and dusted for that stop. 2.7 seconds. Now we need to try and... See if these medium tyres can bring me back into the game. Because at the moment, we're out of it. Someone's just broken down in front of me. It's the racing point of Stroll. I'll tell you what, the racing points have had so many problems in this career mode. They've retired in all of the races. I'm going to jump Vaber here. Yes! Let's go! The undercut pays off versus Lucas Vaber. We're now in front of the Red Bull man. Hamilton stays in front of us, though. Can I challenge him? I've got some fuel. So I'm going to use it up and try and get his DRS. Oh my god, my tyres are dead. This is going to be a rough finish. It doesn't feel like it, but my tyres are dead. Here comes Weber. It's going to fly past. He's not got as much straight line speed in that Red Bull, but it is enough. Bump my way through, though. You left that door open, maybe. You shouldn't have left that door open. Okay, wow. Hamilton wins the Chinese Grand Prix. We will keep it a Mercedes 1-2. That was rough, man. Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm glad you're happy with it, but... Uh, ultimately, we didn't really have the pace. Um, I don't know what happened in that final lap. On that final lap, the tyres just turned to, to gold dust. I mean, they literally had no performance left, but it's quite strange, because I the, uh, just checked then, as you would have seen, excuse me, the tyres didn't even overheat, so I'm a bit perplexed by that, um, but Lewis Hamilton, though, takes a fair race victory, nothing wrong with that at all, 
Um, obviously, like I said, I mean, we want to win as many championships as we possibly can in Mercedes. Um, but, uh, of course, uh, the main aim, as you know from the F1 project, is we want to max out the Merc. Um, but in that, that race, it was a bit, it was a bit rough, though. But as you can see, though, Hamilton wins the Grand Prix. His fastest, I mean, I, I didn't even get to 34s on my fastest lap, but I still got P2. Um, ahead of um, Weber, Vettel, Butler, uh, and then uh, Verstappen. That's all, they were far away, these two Ferraris and Verstappen in the end. Um, but yeah, that's it for this for this race. Standing-wise, that now puts Lewis Hamilton eight points clear at the top. Uh, after that result, he is now on 70 points. I'm on 62. Constructor Championship-wise, that's going to put Mercedes now 68 points clear of Ferrari. Of course, we are in the fastest car, so we're expecting to be at the top. But we are just trying to make sure that we're consistently at the top. I mean, I was, but it came down to... In terms of that, but I'm going to praise the engine side of things because the engine's very good. You and Lucas by the finish today. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, he's got a great car and he's obviously in a great team. <laughs> so am I. How does it feel sharing a Formula One podium with your old F2 team? Uh, I'm just going to praise my team again because I don't give a shit about Ava. We've not seen much development progression for your car recently. Why is that? If we're not performing hard, it's to get resources to invest in R&D. Oh, what? Appreciate your time. I thought that would be a nice answer. Damn it, freaking Claire just caught me out. She's like, yo, yo, bruv, man, you got the upgrades. And I'm like, yeah, bruv. And she's like, so, where are they? And I'm like, bitch, I don't need them. Anyway, speaking of that, I think we beat uh, Devon Bullsack, though, in all departments, which is good. Versus Hamilton, however, we are now back to losing against him uh, once again, which is a pain in the backside. Resource point-wise, though, they're going to come through now, and I'm just going to take them. And uh, let's have a look, then. So we've got 1,000 resource points that we can spend. So let's have a look, then. Uh, and the what we need to do, the team goal is to finish uh, first in a race, and we can only do that next to Baku. Too bad that, yeah, that's, that's great. Thanks for that. Right, first things first, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to purchase this upgrade for Azerbaijan because it didn't arrive. Then we are going to purchase this engine upgrade to come in for Spain, and we can't do anything else after that. Can I do one of these? No, I can't. I can't do a quality control, and I can't do a general maintenance, uh, which is a bit of a shame for the durability, because I forgot that, the well, everything's wearing out quite quickly. The IC is already on 47%. It's only done three races. Ha <laughs> ha! And my gearbox is on... Th oh, my gearbox actually is okay. It's on 38% wear out of... I can get the gearbox towards it. It's the IC I need to work on. Um, but let's go to the uh, Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Um, because I think for the F1 project, I'm going to leave it at two races an episode. I think it's kind of nicer that way. Um, and also, it doesn't mean that I... You know, if I wanted to record one race and then leave and then come back and record another race, I could do that. Like I'm going to do for this one. Because I'm going to show you all of this in Azerbaijan. Man's going to cook up some food. You get me? And then I'm going to carry on from there. Uh, let's have a look then. Let's see what we did. Uh, Upgrade-wise. Um, I know Red Bull upgraded in the last episode. Uh, that put them... Uh, sorry, in the Chinese Grand Prix. And that put them on par with Ferrari. Um, but we are now going to hopefully... Well, we're... No, ho not hopefully. We're 100% getting our first piece of upgrades on the car. And I think my game's frozen, which is fucking fantastic. Okay, so we are now back. Um, it... It eventually kicked itself into gear and there we go so all of the upgrades for this air uh, for this race are going to come into effect which is brilliant and we're going to have a dry grand prix so now if we have a look at the performance chart we will be able to see that there goes the uh, cable assembly and there goes the front wing gurney flap on so our first pieces of upgrades have finally gone to the car one upgrade out of 19 are on and one out of 18 is on there We've still got a very long way to go for upgrading. And unfortunately, uh, for the chassis side of things, I no longer can do any more upgrades. On this side, I have a major upgrade over here. And it's the same for the aerodynamics. Again, I have a major upgrade over here. And obviously, the rules state that I have to only upgrade the minors first. Then I can move on to the majors and then the ultimates. Which means it's going to be power, power, power. We've got three engine power upgrades that we have to put onto the car first. And then we've got the ERS that we can put on then. And then I could technically do a durability upgrade because that's just minor all around. So durability, I'm not really halted by. I can just do whatever durability I need to put onto the car at all given points. But now, unfortunately, I'm stuck behind this upgrade. I'm stuck behind this one. I have to do engine power. 
It's a nice little fun rule change, though. But let me see if anyone else has made any progress then. Obviously, we've got that coming in. So, well, there we go. Look, you can see there that we, uh, a couple of teams have made some upgrades. So, Williams have made a small upgrade, but they're crap. Uh, Alpha and Mayo have made an upgrade just behind Toro. So, Toro made an upgrade, a couple of upgrades, actually, for the uh, Chinese Grand Prix. Nothing coming to them. Renault have jumped back up in front of uh, Toro Rosso because they've brought an upgrade. Racing Point brought one for Bahrain by the looks of it. Nothing else since. McLaren have brought a couple actually and they're right on the back of Haas's tail. Haas have brought a few. Red Bull brought one upgrade. Ferrari haven't brought any and of course we've now double upgraded uh, and we're now streaking a little bit further clear which is awesome. We've got the practice programs to go and then the race but you'll see that straight away from me. I don't know when because I uh Man, I've got stuff to do. Okay, so we are back and we are here for Baku. Uh, I would have obviously skipped it and you can probably tell it's a completely different day that I'm recording this. Uh, first things first, we've done all of the practice programs. You can see we're up to 800 resource points, but I'm going to use those at the end of the episode. Um, and straight off the bat, yeah, I'm really struggling uh, around here. So um, I'll see you for the end of qualifying. I don't even think I'm going to get top five in quality. I'm, that, I'm just struggling that bad. I really am not hooked up with the circuit at all, so it's going to be damage limitation for this race. As you guys can kind of tell by the status of my front wing, I've crashed a few times on this qualifying lap, and I'm all the way down in P18. Uh, this track is just AIDS for me. I hate it. I hate driving around Baku so much. Well, you can see Hamilton there was on pole. No one else really came near. Red Bull were actually a bit far further off than I expected, but we're down in P18. I'm just going to take a new engine, I think, and just start last. Okay, so take two of this race, because the first time my game froze, uh, and then it unfroze a minute later, and I crashed. So, um, what have we got then? Uh, this is the strategy I selected. I'm going to go medium to soft. Uh, if my pace is good in the race, then I should actually be all right uh, and get some places. I could have made a big mistake here, but it makes no odds. Here we go then. Five red lights. Lights out and your mum is on cocaine. Here we go. I mean, no difference at all. Let's try and get in front of McLaren if we can. Alright, we're not going to be able to get in front of Norris. We're alongside the Williams. Got to take it easy. Heavy wheel spin then off that corner. That's us already making up places though. Take an easy line into here. That was a bit aggressive on Perez, I'm not going to lie. I only need the traction. I can go around the outside here. There you go. Lovely stuff. Oh, this is going to get tough. If I follow K-Mag through, give him the poosh. And then go down the inside. Lovely. That's Magnuson out of the way. And we're up into 13th place after the end of the first lap. I call that a very solid opening lap there. Clearing plenty of traffic off the start. Getting involved with the front runners. No, not with the front runners, sorry, with the midfield pack. Getting straight through them. And we're obviously on the medium tyres as well. I can afford to turn the engine down. Somehow Giovinazzi has more straight line speed here than Kafia. Well, I've got the inside line here, so I can dictate that. Double overtake. Thank you very much. There's got to be a portion of the race where I've got to be patient. It'll get so easy for me to just want to just barge my way through, but I've got to be patient in the overtakes. I'm in a very, very strong position already, so I can't afford to throw it away, really. This is going to be patient now. There we go. All the while, though, I am saving ERS, which is beautiful. And now I can let it fly a bit. Of course, I have got less drag in this car, which I've realised. Try to go for it there. Should be able to dive out the inside here. There you go. 
now I'll turn up the engine and go and catch the others. Hockenberg, they're surrendering. Well, not really. I thought he was surrendering it. Just got the inside instead. There we go. I thought he was being nice. He clearly wasn't. I'm going to give Science Slipstream for that. Alright, here we come then. In for our one and only stop. Hamilton's going to go off into the distance. I... It's annoying because I don't. I'm not going to win the Grand Prix, and obviously one of my objectives to get 600 resource points is win a race, uh, and it's frustrating because China obviously didn't have the pace anyway, and just in general, like I don't. I don't even know. I'm not even going to get past Weber. I am. I am going to get past Weber. It's fine. Okay. Right. Soft tires now. I've been matching pace with these guys on mediums. Now I've got the faster tyre compound. Let's see how it works out. I mean, if you let me go around the outside, I will. Next up is Gasly. This is going to get tight. Oh! Close him off. That works. And we're through. Brilliant. Up into fourth place now. Butler and Vettel are fighting up ahead. Now we've got to get our foot down. And do you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to go for the fast slap. Because why not? Let's try and get that extra point. What's made my attack on these... Uh, on this? Well, sorry. What's made me close up so much to these two Ferraris in the lap is... Well, first of all, I'm going for fast slap. Secondly, um, well, they're just fighting each other. I've got no more ERS left, so I'm going to have to leave that in none. But I do have Rich Mix up my sleeve. And a fastest lap to go with it. Lovely jubbly. Is Vessel going to go for it? He is. Not the ideal position to go for one of those overtakes. That's going to give me a run. I can sort of just clunk that curb a little bit. That's slightly better for me in some respects. I've got a better run now for Seb throughout the whole of the straight. And then overtake mode. And I'll just let the rest to the... Oh my god, there's a yellow flag. Wait, is that for Hamilton? No, it's not. It's for Kibitzers. I can't. I can't go for it. I can now. I was about to say, I thought that... That uh, yellow flag, sorry, was for Lewis Hamilton then. Because obviously he was so far up the road. He was still for the Williams. They still kept the flag out. Up into P2, though. Fantastic recovery so far. And the 1 2 for Mercedes will, unless these Ferraris have got anything in their back pocket that they're hiding, will continue. We've had great pace, though, in the race. Okay, on to the straight then for the final time. Hamilton's going to come across the line and win, as you expect, here at Baku. From P20 on the grid, though, to finish at P2 with the fastest lap as well. Good strategy. Good pace. I actually had a bit too much fuel in my car on that uh, front, but um, we did a great job to recover that in, in that race. I'm gutted that we didn't have a good quali. I reckon if we had a good qualifying session, I might have been able to actually have taken the fight to Lewis. Um, but yeah, I think what's a bit frustrating is that um, in these uh, four races, you know, I've, I've finished in the top two in all of them, but Hamilton has, has won three and I've won once, so... Overall, at the moment, Hamilton is beating me, which is a bit annoying because, I, like I've said before, you know, we're, we're trying to max out this Merc, but, you know, we want to win as many championships as we possibly can there, and Lewis is, well, doing a great job of, uh, of doing that, as you can see there on the top of the podium, but, I mean, we had good pace. What I am really struggling with, and I, know, I think I just need to keep playing on PC a bit more, is is braking and acceleration from corners. Um, I just don't feel like, I feel like my braking points are just off. And then my acceleration is just, you know, a bit too too over ambitious. I'm sliding the rear of the car too much. Um, but if we have a look now at what is going to be the uh, fast start, you can see here, look, everyone was in the 42s. And eventually, I mean, look, like I was, I literally did a, 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 a proper qualifying lap uh, there, um, going, you know, rich and hot lap the whole way. Uh, the Red Bulls, though, had a bad race. Weber finishing down in P6 and Verstappen down in P9. Uh, the two Ferraris, though, were, were there, um, but we managed to get the fastest lap point at least, so we got something 
uh, versus Hamilton. Championship standings wise, because we're obviously going to not be doing any more races. Uh, Hamilton leads the championship by 14 points uh, ahead of myself. And then Butler and Vettel now jumps in front of Verstappen. The Red Bulls with a bad race. You can see the rest. Uh, of the uh, the drivers there and then in the constructors championship mercedes now 85 points clear of ferrari again we have had a one two in every single race so far uh which is very very similar to the real life championship go on then take my thoughts um it was called foot to the floor <laughs> do you think you were lucky not to end your race with that crash um no because i was too busy commentating well, mid-race thanks anyway you're welcome. I'm glad you only asked two questions because I couldn't be bothered to answer any more. But with this episode now being done and dusted, we can now have a look at upgrades that we can now make for the next race. Now, annoyingly, like I said, we didn't manage to get the upgrade for... Uh, sorry, we didn't get the race bonus because obviously we didn't win. So we, we lost out, which you can see right here. We didn't get that, which is a bit annoying for us. Despite that, though... We can only look positively, and we're going to have a look at the contract negotiations, and, well, start again. So, let's have a look at these negotiations. Now, normally, they're a bit, well, weird with them. So, first of all, simultaneous development, I'm not too concerned about. If I did that, and I did that, and I did expected race position, second and second, second driver and hard. What's that like? That's enough. Well, there we go, then. So... We're now going to have extra resource points coming in uh, for each race by 25%, which is fantastic. We're then going to have minor upgrades uh, coming our way. We can now do simultaneous developments, which again is going to help us out. And we have got 1,100 R&D points. Problem is, I can't spend them anywhere. Engine side of things, I need to wait for this spark plug upgrade to come in the next race for me to, in order to do anything. I can't do that because I'm not allowed to do any upgrades on majors until I've done minors. Same with the chassis side of things. So I could do a general maintenance durability upgrade and I believe that is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do this upgrade here to get a bit of extra reliability all around for the car and just give keep all the components there. Now as you can see I'm also then going to do this quality control on the uh, powertrain side of things. It's going to allow less failures come onto the car because no matter what obviously I have to upgrade everything. So all of these department efficiencies they've got to be maxed out. All of these quality control pieces, they have to be maxed out. I can't leave them alone. Um, and then, obviously, with this only being 440 resource points, it means I'm going to have a good chance of getting that in the next episode. But, guys, thank you very much for watching the F1 Project, episode number two. If you guys have enjoyed it, feel free to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here as well. And I will see you guys for the next race where we're going to be off for the Spanish Grand Prix and also the Monaco Grand Prix. So, thank you very much for watching. Take care, all. Peace.